Stepping up to the couch, it's Brian, who led the league last season in cracked screens. But with his new athletic case, it looks like that won't be the case. <laughs> Touchdown, Brian! I know me showing that clip may come off as me trying to make fun of Giannis, but in reality, I'm using it to call out Reggie Miller. What he said was fucking stupid. You can't be the front runner for MVP air bond free throws. Man, shut the hell up. What the hell does free throw making ability have to do with winning MVP? I mean, of course it's important that you know how to make your free throws, but Reggie is acting like that's the number one qualifier for MVP. I mean, if that were the case, you would think that Reggie Miller, a career 89% free throw shooter, should have at least come close to winning an MVP, right? Or at the very least, he should have made at least one All-NBA second team selection. But no, never happened, and that's unfortunate. Maybe the guy who averaged 28 and 13 all season can still win MVP despite airballing two free throws in the NBA playoffs. Because the guy that beat Reggie Miller's team in the NBA Finals, Shaquille O'Neal, won MVP in 2001, averaging, let's see, uh, 28 and 13. So maybe just, I don't know. Shut the hell up, Reggie Miller. Just a thought. Anyways, sorry about that. I've always had a bone to pick with one of the worst commentators in sports. But with that out of the way, I want to talk about Giannis, the MVP race, why he should be everyone's pick for MVP, and why he will win MVP, regardless of your opinion. Now, before I roll the intro and we start talking about the MVP race, I want to clarify something that a lot of people seem to get confused with in regards to the MVP race. I just wanted to clear this up. The MVP is a regular season award. The MVP is a regular season award. I repeat, the MVP is a regular season award. How do people not understand this yet? Holy fuck. Roll the intro. By the way, feel free to use that clip of me with the megaphone in response to any morons trying to bring up the playoffs in an MVP debate on Twitter. Because these debates will start back up when the MVP is announced. So naturally, I decided to make this video now, when no one cares. So let's start this debate where all NBA discussions start, and that is with the stats. At face value, it seems that James Harden was a much better producing scorer than Giannis this year. And by the way, the only two guys that we will be talking about for MVP in this video are gonna be James Harden and Giannis. Paul George's shot at the award died along with his shoulder. So at face value, Harden looks like a way more productive scorer. But what needs to be taken into consideration is their minutes per game. This year, Harden was averaging 27 minutes a game while Harden averaged 33. If you put their numbers together in per 36, Harden averages five more points per game, but it's not an eight and a half point difference. And when you compare their per 36 stats side by side, Giannis is also averaging 7.2 more rebounds a game. And he only averages 0.9 less assists despite playing a power forward. And also, worth mentioning, Giannis having a much smaller usage rate. He also has Harden beat in regular shooting percentage and true shooting percentage. So I would argue that Giannis had the better stats, but there is some context that needs to be applied to those stats. One one thing I don't think a lot of people seem to understand is that who you do and don't have on your roster can have a significant impact on your stats. Now in terms of help, my guess is that most people would think that Giannis had the best help of the two for most of the season, and while I would agree with that, I don't think the difference is as significant as it seems. Looking at the team's two best players, Giannis had the better Robin to his Batman with Chris Middleton, Harden had CP3 who is already a worse player than Middleton, if you're asking me, and Giannis also 
got 20 more games of Middleton than Harden got out of Chris Paul. The next best player for the Bucks would be Malcolm Brogdon, who averaged 15 points per game on a 40-50-90 shooting. And for the Rockets, it's Clint Capella, who averaged 16 and 13. Capella wins that one in my opinion. And yes, I understand that Clint Capella sucked in the playoffs, but... Nah, I think you get it. And then for the fourth best guy for the Bucks, it's either Brooke Lopez or Eric Bledsoe. And for the Rockets, it's either PJ Tucker or Eric Gordon. And I'd honestly say that both Tucker and Gordon are better. For Tucker, his impact on this team goes far beyond his stats. Yeah, but for Brooke Lopez, it really comes down to just his three-point shooting. And for both of the Erics, Gordon is better than Bledsoe if you're asking me, but I'm also very much not a fan of Eric Bledsoe. I don't think he helps them that much. He is a terrible shooter, not the best guy to give the ball to, and defensively, he often doesn't give a shit, even though when he does care, he is elite. But the fact that he got all defensive first team is a goddamn travesty, because he's not all defensive first team level good at defense. I'll definitely give it to Harden. He had the weaker help, and because of all of the shooters around Giannis, it makes it really hard for teams to double-team him without consequence. Not that the Rockets were a bad shooting team outside of Harden, because they weren't, but other than Eric Gordon, there was no really elite shooters around Harden. Besides for P.J. Tucker in the corner, because I don't think I've ever seen that man miss a corner three. Corner three! So stats-wise, Giannis wins that side of the argument for who had the weaker help, Harden wins that side of the argument. So now let's talk about winning, an aspect of the MVP award that I see a lot of people overlook. I'm specifically talking about Kobe stands. While yes, I am a Kobe fan, Kobe did not deserve the 2006 MVP. Just shut up. You're making us all look ridiculous. So in terms of winning, obviously the Bucks won more games than the Houston Rockets this year. The Bucks actually had the best record in the NBA this year, being the only team to win 60 games. The Rockets, on the other hand, were the fourth seed in the Western Conference with just 53 wins. Though it could be argued that Harden, playing with a slightly lesser roster in the Western Conference, 53 wins is more impressive than 60. I think we all know about the historic differences between the Western and Eastern Conference, but this year it's been even more ridiculous. Now I would argue argue that the top side of the Eastern Conference is the strongest that it has ever been before. There were four teams that had legit finals hopes, and the Pacers could have been in that mix if Oladipo was healthy. But the bottom half of the East is very shallow. We have the Pistons, the Nets, and the Orlando Magic making it into the playoffs. That's not great. All three of those teams, with their records, playing against mostly Eastern Conference teams would not have made the playoffs in the Western Conference. And the Pacers would have been tied for the 8th seed. I would say that the East top four teams are a little bit better than the West top four teams, but in terms of depth, the West blows the East out of the water. So basically, with context, Giannis has the best stats. Harden had the lesser team, and Giannis led his team to the best record in the NBA. But when you consider the context of the East versus West, the difference in wins seems a little bit less significant. So when you look at everything with its context, I think it's a close race, a lot closer than I even felt it was initially. However, notice how much I have said the phrase, with context. The thing is, with the MVP, the context has never mattered all that much. In the long term, people always forget about the context, and the MVP is an award that we always think about in the long term. Even though it's the most prestigious individual award in the game, the MVP award is given as much context as Rookie of the Year or Defensive Player of the Year, hell, even the All-NBA teams. Only the really controversial MVP decisions, which this one very well could be, get talked about in the long term. The the fact is, players pretty much never win MVP without having a top 3 record in the NBA, though there are some exceptions. Giannis is the best player on the best team in the NBA. That will win him the MVP award regardless of how you feel. I promise you that Giannis will be the 2019 MVP, or else I'll look really stupid. And also, I'm pretty sure that early voting was already leaked. I'm not positive on that, but I remember it being like 80% votes for Giannis. Could be wrong. I don't know, man. And for me, the pick of who should be MVP comes to one simple thing. There are two sides of the ball. Harden and Giannis both dominate 
on the offensive end. But on the defensive end, Harden is okay. He's not as bad as he was a few years ago. It's no longer a meme. And I would understand him not giving 100% effort considering how much offensive responsibility he has. But for Giannis, he also has maybe not as much offensive responsibility as Harden, but pretty much more than 99% of the league. But even with that, he is one of the final three candidates for Defensive Player of the Year. And I personally feel like he should be the one to win it. Harden might end up being the most versatile defensive player of all time. There is really no player in NBA history that can truly, and I mean truly, defend one through five. LeBron could really only guard one through four, so no, it's not him. There is no player who is seven feet tall that can also go as fast as a guard and has the length to be an incredible shot blocker. There is no player who can guard one through five for real besides for Giannis. Giannis is top 10 in blocks per game. He's one of the best rim protectors in the league and he is top 30 in steals. And just from the eye test, he is the anchor of the Bucks defense. And he is one of the most impressive defensive players that I have ever seen. And just to be sure that I don't see this shit in the comment section, I will say it a second time. The MVP is a regular season award. The playoffs have nothing to do with it. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this and cue the outro music.